Hello and welcome back, I'm Bimojo and this is the Water and Traffic Management Update for Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. I'm going to try to give you everything that I've learned over the last 40-50 hours playing with this update and hope I can give you a head start with what you're about to encounter. First things first, can you turn it on on an existing safe? Short answer is yes. Long answer is yes, but it will take you a long time to actually make it work. If you want to just turn it on, go over here, uh, water management, enable, there you go, traffic simulation down here, a sec a separate setting. You have to turn both of those on. These are both now settings if you start a brand new game. Cool. First thing. Uh, second question. Do buildings get upgraded? Uh, short answer is yes, kind of, half of them. There are two types of water that you will have to consider. There is drinking water and then there is industrial water. They're kind of the same thing, but not really. Drinking water is anything that a person needs inside a building. Think of a bathroom. Anything you can do in a bathroom, anything you can do in a kitchen, that is drinking water that you want to consume. That means all residential buildings get drinking water, but also industries will need drinking water because there are generally bathrooms there unless you own certain companies. Um, so yes, drinking water is the one that is added to every building, doesn't matter if it's modded or not. They all get it, they all get upgraded. Cool, wonderful. Uh, if you wanna see how your drinking water is doing, you just go over here to your buildings and you will see these bars at the bottom. This is the pressure that you have coming in, this is your consumption per day, this is your total consumption so far, this is your water quality, and then this is your sewage with pollution and uh, current fill, uh, fill level. Pretty straightforward. And you can actually go in and understand how much uh, sewage you're going to produce or how much water you're going to produce. In this case, max daily water consumption, 11.63 cubic meters a day. That is per person, per person. So you can divide that 11.63 cubic meters per day by 179. And then, then you know what your daily consumption per one person is. The consumption only happens when the people are actually inside the building, like all the other utilities as well. So there you go. The second type of water is industrial water, and that is different. Industrial water generally is used at industries, and industries will not upgrade those automatically. If you want to use them, you have to rebuild them completely. Um, a little annoying, but here's the thing. Um, here's the alumina plant. I used that before, maybe. Uh, let's use, use a different one. Food. No, alumina. Alumina is a better, a better, um, better thing that I can show you. So, the original Illumina plant uh, didn't have four outputs. The outputs are on the bottom uh, right now looking at us. That's the blue, like some blue labels that you can see. And then also on the side here, there are some brown labels. The blue, blue labels are just water in. The brown labels are sewage outputs. Pretty simple, but your existing safe will not have these. They will have the old ones. However, that doesn't mean you can't play with the water if you want to. Because all the buildings, all the vanilla buildings at least, got their recipes updated. Um, as far as I know, these recipes that you can see right here in this row are tied to the building itself. So your modded buildings may still function completely without water. They just won't require water. You can decide if you want to keep playing with that or not. I'm assuming mods will take a little while to get that updated. But in this case... The Illumina plant requires 29 cubic meters of water to run a day with all these other inputs, which is a lot, because if you can't get this in here via pipe, you have to use trucks. The first thing, uh, you can use trucks to fill up the uh, drinking water over here. That's all that is. And you can do that pretty simply with the technical services, which is another building you will have to rebuild, because the previous vanilla um, buildings looked exactly the same with this difference. This row does not exist in them, and they don't get it uh, automatically. You have to rebuild these unless they change it in some update later on. But at this point, you have to rebuild these and <clears throat> use them to bring your water and sewage uh, to the places that you want to do it. But to use technical services, you have to buy two extra buildings. If you go into plumbing, this is where most of your water is. On the left is water, and on the right is sewage. Um, you will have to build a water loading and unloading station. That is this guy. Then you also have to build a sewage um, loading and unloading station. That is this guy. These two guys, after you build them, you have to assign them to your water and sewage uh, resources here, and then you can start using them uh, if you have a pipe connected. The pipe that I've connected is right here, running underground. They only have currently underground pipes. Don't worry about this kink. I did something with the landscaping here that the game didn't like. 
Um, but yeah, you need to actually get a resource of water from somewhere. Now, there are a couple resources of water, and I'm just gonna mix it up here a little bit. There's a small water well. This one does not require any workers. It just requires power to function. I have it here with a uh, with one of these guys, but that seems to be fine. Then there is a big water well that requires up to seven workers and can produce up to 215 cubic meters per water. I don't feel that number is correct, but this produces at least three times as much water as the small water well. That's all you have to worry about, really. And then there is a surface water outflow. The surface water outflow you put um, at a source of water somewhere. Let's zoom in far enough so you can actually see it. Sorry for moving around. Um, there's a pipe and then there is a side that has to face the water. It may be a little finicky the first time you, you use this, but effectively that's there it is. Um, just looks like this. And it sucks the water off the surface of whatever water, body of water you're nearby. So pretty simple, and then you just connect a pipe underneath here. Pretty simple. The thing that is different between all of them is the source of pollution that you get out of uh, with the water. If you place a stall like this and there's no pollution in the ground anywhere, and pollution is treated the same if it's in the air or in the ground does not make a difference, anything is polluting. That even means city buildings are polluting your area. So in this case, the source of pollution is 16%. If I would put it here, that's pretty bad. And the source of pollution over here, for example, is just 4%. 4% means 96% purity. And again, anything after 97% is pure drinking water. So 96% you could drink, it will just give you a small health penalty. And if you look at this, my health penalty is pretty high actually. So um, don't mess with that. <laughs> cool. So those are the three methods that you can get water in. Um, and then you connect that to your loading and unloading station, and um, then you have water, water available. Great, you obviously need power for this guy, but uh, there you go. If you hover over your technical, technical service, it will highlight still the roads that it did before for the Snow Plus, but it also highlights the buildings that it can reach for water and sewage. Um, right now, it's only the building over here and none of the other buildings. And if you wonder why, it's pretty simple. These buildings that I have here for sewage and for uh, water actually have a coverage radius, and we're going to rebuild them in a second. But the serv uh, this technical service actually tells you all buildings that don't have its own sewer or water substations connected. So these are all the buildings that the technical service can now reach. Now it has to reach these individually, which is not great because that's a lot of driving for a lot of extra somethings, um, but they can't. And they can bring water now to every single building, wherever you are. And um, yeah, they, they can be happy. You can use this in a city. Bonus, the thing that I was actually doing. Um, nope, I don't want to destroy that one. And there. The thing that you can now do is just place down a water substation. Looks like this. You place it anywhere you want. And if you didn't like the yellow or blue lines or any of the lines that we usually see in the game, you can get rid of them now by just holding shift. Pretty simple, right? And you can uh, press control still to remove the, uh, the tooltip. And then you can press both buttons together to get rid of all those things. So just one of the little updates. Um, but as you can see, we're pretty much covering everything. So you can put the water substation here. With the water substation there, um, the technical service can now go to this water substation. And this water substation will just deliver water to anywhere that you like. But as you can see, it's still highlighting all buildings. Uh, because sewage is still not reachable, or is still uh, not a centralized location. So if I just place a sewage tank somewhere over here, um, let that build, cool, that is done. If I now hover over the technical services, um, only, and it's probably hard to see in, on the internet, but only the substation over here for water and the sewer sewer channel over here for sewage is is going to be reached by... <clears throat> excuse me, the technical service, and there's a truck driving out there, gonna drop off water right in there, and then everyone should be happy. So this can be a really, really easy setup for your early industries that don't need a lot of water, just need some water, and your early uh, small villages, because you don't have to build a full piping system if you don't want to. You can, and we're gonna get there, hopefully very soon. But that's how this works. These are just driving out, getting water here, bringing it somewhere else. And for the bigger buildings, you may have some water tanks that you can see here. And if we empty this whole storage, then another water tank will go out and refill that storage. You may see some of the industries have multiple water tanks. There's water, um, water, 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 well, water, sewage, water, sewage. 
Um, the one at the bottom is the drinking water. It should say that, but I hope they update the label. The one at the top is the industrial piece. For the industrial piece, the technical service will not deliver it. I hope they update that, but at this point, it just doesn't. To fill the um, industrial portion of it, you need to set up an individual line. At this point, I have not seen uh, the distribution office work with this. I, I tried it before, but it's you, you can't buy the correct trucks in here. Uh, there's no sewage and no water tanks that you can get. You can try to assign this guy, but eh, you can't. So distribution office doesn't work. But what you can do, and I tried this a couple times now, tell this guy, hey, get me water, and then drop, drop the water up here, and then the water should actually fill the industrial need. Let's check it out quick. There's our tank. And some of the industrial water was filled. So this is a way that you can continue playing your safe without upgrading every single building. This won't be sufficient for every situation that you have, but it can help with some of your situations, okay? Um, so the direct line will fill up the water tank for the industry. The technical service will fill up the water tank for the drinking water. These may overlap, honestly, but I'm not 100% certain on that. But this is a way that you can do this. However, once you supply water, you also have to take care of the sewage that gets produced in both situations. The sewage from drinking water is already taken care of by the technical services, but the sewage for um, the industrial waste is not. So get another truck. So the same thing, wait until full here uh, and unload here. Cool, uh, pretty simple, right? That, that should work pretty well. The other thing that was actually just added with the update today that I haven't looked at. So let's do a quick live test. Peter said that he fixed the import and export of sewage and water for uh, the customs house. So let's check this. Can I use, no, you cannot use the customs house. So, but to, to get the water in, you still have to pick up the water from somewhere else, but I would think if I set up a new water truck, we're not gonna use a different one, new water truck, we could pick up water from here uh, and drop it off wherever we want. So in this area, so we don't have to set up this whole uh, water piping system if we don't want to. Um, but I also feel that we can sell water uh, as well as sewage. Where sewage, and let's look at this, uh, water we get per ton, we get eight bucks or pay eight bucks. And per sewage ton, let's see, where are you? Sewage, 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 wastewater. There you go. Negative eight. So we have to pay to get rid of our sewage. That can totally be worth it. I'm sure technical services will get an upgrade where you can actually tell them to go to the current, um, to the to the export building. Uh, just give it some time. But there you go. Right now we need to set up all of this uh, manually with, with the different pipes and direct lines. But that's fine. Cool. Um, that's really all that you have to know about the upgrading if you want uh, want to use, continue using your uh, your old republic. The other things that we need to do is take care of things. The first thing, um, I think you can imagine this, you can tell your technical service to pick up your sewage from here uh, because it's full now, which means the other buildings are actually going to start overflowing pretty soon. Not yet, but eventually they will. And then your sewage has to go somewhere. You have a couple options. Um, one option is the sewage treatment plant. This looks like this, it has some numbers, it's pretty big. Uh, the problem is right now it only has sewage in and sewage out, so no water gets produced here. But if you want to upgrade your water, or sorry, your wastewater to good water, you have to use chemicals, very, very expensive. So um, I haven't built these, but for realism's sake, they exist. You could bring the sewage water in and then you have a little less dirty sewage water that comes out. One option. Uh, the second option is just dump it directly into the water source. And at this point, you can only dump into water sources. Here's a thing that's called a sewage discharge. It's exactly what you think it is. Um, put that here. And it's literally just a thing where you can run sewage out of the out into the water. Um, how do you build sewage? It is one of the more complicated things, I will say. Sewage does not require water. It's very well simulated. To move sewage around, you just need a slope. Water, sewage needs to flow downhill. That's very, very important. So what you have to do is actually understand your terrain. Look at your terrain. To a measurement from, well, here is the thing that we have. So height is 18 meters. And here is the discharge that we have. Height is zero meters, perfect. 
Um, and you, you should use this tool because this is the slope that will tell you if you can do something or if you can't. Very, very important. You can also get the length and the elevation change and all that other stuff. Very important. But this is important now if you want to place your sewage pipes. It's especially important for sewage. There are pumps, but there's not a lot you can do if you have a really big height difference and you want to flow sewage uphill. Trust me, it's just a lot of work. But the thing that we can do here is go into the underground mode, then pick your sewage switch. I think this one looks fine uh, because I have a feeling we're going to have more than one uh, connection for the sewage. Again, this one does not require um, power. So we can just throw it there and then we can look at our pipes. Uh, three different pipes, three different sizes. There's a small sewage pipe with 36 cubic meters, a big 175, and then the biggest one is 169. I will tell you that this is not as much as it sounds. Um, yeah, a, a big city will need several of these and you just have to make sure that you uh, keep an eye on what you can do and can't do. Uh, connect those there and then the last one can be connected here. Cool, and because we're flowing downhill, it's not a problem. If we would try to flow uphill, and actually we could connect this one then we don't need a direct sewage connection and that should be fine. This is three meters. Yeah, no, this this looks good. Um, I'm trying to find a, yeah, requires proper slope. So you cannot go uphill. This is what it will tell you if you're not actually going downhill. Apparently this one is downhill enough, so we can just connect this and be happy, and it will just flow out into the river. Um, pretty simple, actually. Cool, uh, with that, I would assume, and we can see here, a couple sewage trucks already started dumping uh, sewage in here, and that is great. And then we can look at one of the new tools, a new overlay. There are a couple new things in here, but the overlay has water flow and sewage flow. Right now, we only have sewage, we don't have water, and you can see what happens here. I would expect this number to just spike every once in a while. It's just like this, this shove, there's a little bit of sewage coming in and it goes out and that will happen every once in a while. Right now we don't have a lot going on here, so just uh, see what happens. But the pipes will actually change color if they get overloaded. Right now they're under underutilized, so everything is fine. We don't have to worry about it. Wonderful, that's sewer lane. Something you should be aware of for everyone that wants to build pretty out there, sewer pipes will have manhole uh, covers like this. If you build them in the prairie, they look uh, like that. They will just stick out and look a little ugly. If you build them under roads, they look a little better. You see, they just look like they belong there. Um, just something to be aware of, but um, it's not the end of the world for anyone. However, uh, yes, they, they don't interfere with your buildings. I think at some point it was interfering, but now not anymore. So that's pretty cool. The next thing, water. I'm gonna go through the full water setup now because I skipped a bunch of things. First, we need a water source. Your water source is a well that's either unmanned, or I talked about that, manned, or uh, from, from the lake. Uh, pretty straightforward, right? So you place that somewhere. If you place that somewhere on um, plain ground, let's go here. Just want something flat. And again, it just needs some power. If you place it here, then normal water dynamics work because gravity-filled water is a thing um, because this guy right here is clearly higher than the uh, loading unloading station down there and the pipe runs downhill. This works and there should be, let's see here, water flow. Uh, yeah, we don't have any because this one is storing some water already. Doesn't It doesn't have any internal storage. So to show you that point, I will add a quick water storage in here that hopefully brings the point across. Use a small water tower. Smaller water, water tower only has one in, one out. That should work. Now let's look at the pipes quick. There is a small pipe, a medium pipe, and a large pipe. Numbers um, are important, but honestly, I will tell you something later that will probably blow your mind a little bit about how this all actually works. Now that we have this guy here, it actually fills up. I'm gonna slow this down, get our overlay back up with this guy, and then we see what the water flow is. The water flow is 32 meters per second flowing right into here and that's where it's going to be stored and because this is a tower we are still gravity fed and this tower can feed um, into this water loading and unloading station pretty simple why do i know that because this truck is going to go out here and is actually going to take out a little bit of water uh, from this guy which means you should see this number spike when that guy goes to pick up some water it's not a lot of water so you just gotta have look have to look quickly spike Spike, spike, and there you go. 
Now I'm sleeping. So the gravity fed water works. Uh, one. Two. Through experiments, I found out that this small water tower is about 30 meters high. That's important. So look at your look at your tool and know that this height is 18 meters, 19 meters. At 30 meters, we're now at 49 meters. This tower up here is 76 meters. Should make sense, right? Water cannot flow uphill, but it can always flow downhill. Cool. Um, the next tower is about 50 meters. Again, only for experimentation. There's no information. I asked Peter a couple times to add that information to these buildings because it's important, but he hasn't yet. A big water tower is uh, 500 meters. Cool. And then there is a water underground reservoir. This one does not have any height. It's always zero, negative zero. But if you will put it on top of a hill somewhere, um, it would still flow downhill. But if you look at the actual shape of this thing, F3, um, there's actually a big drop. You can maybe make that out, maybe you can't, but there's a big drop going down. So you got to consider all of this when you build these. If you run into a situation where you can't just have the height difference because your mat is too flat or any other reasons, um, there are other things that you can do. Pumping stations. Very important. We're going to use... Let's just build a big water well over here because I need to show you something um, a little more, a little more involved. Uh, get me a footpath connection to somewhere. Somewhere it doesn't have to be specific. There you go. Put you right there. You should have power connection. I think that looks good. Cool. Get me some workers in there. Wonderful. So I have this guy here. Um, if we add the water underground pipe. Should I do that? No, let's do, let's do the big tower. Makes my life a little easier. Let's do the big tower right here. Looks good. Um, get our pipes in there. The first thing I will tell you, this won't work. Okay, we just talked about that. Gravity fed will not work. Make sure that everything is on. Are there workers here? We don't have workers there yet, but I don't want to have workers because everyone left. That's fine. Um, I just need them to do a couple things and then we are almost done here. Cool, get in there. Um, someone work there, please. There we go. Now, water is actually produced here, but there's no water flowing between these. That's a, gravi a gravity-fed thing. That is exactly what I said earlier. So, what do we do? Um, well, I've placed the large pipe here. The large pipe has a diameter or a capacity of 127 cubic meters. The thing is, you have two pumps available. These need power. Uh, that should make sense. You have a small pump and a big pump. The small pump looks like this. We're just going to try this one and we'll see what happens because I think it's very important that you understand this next point because this was the reason why I thought I couldn't make my old republic work because I didn't understand this. Okay, now pump is there. It's pumping 22, about 22 cubic meters. Okay, well, here's the thing. This pump actually produces 29. That it gives or that explains or that demonstrates the point that I'm about to make here. This pump, the small pump, has a capacity to pump 30 cubic meters on flat ground. This is very, very important. 30 cubic meters on flat ground. The pipe in or out does not matter unless it's a it's a limit, but it can only pump 30 cubic meters. Um, doesn't matter what you connect. However, because this tower is really high up, it's 50 meters high, um, there's a penalty here. The penalty is you can only pump 22 cubic meters up this tower, okay? Uh, because it's going uphill, so it can't pump the full uh, 32 cubic meters. If we, just uh, for presentation's sake, put a um, this reservoir here, exactly same setup, also the pipe. Again, this pipe has a capacity of 127 cubic meters. If we let that run, once it's built, um, there you go. Once that is built, you get 40 something, 30, a little over 30 cubic meters. Because here, the water flows a little bit down into the reservoir, so you get a bonus. But just by switching these out, you're actually seeing the height differences and what they matter. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing I'm going to show you is get rid of this pipe, because the other pipe is a little more confusing, at least in my mind. Um, the other pipe look pump, pump, not pipe. The other pump looks like this. It has three ins and three outs, and that was confusing the heck out of me because I didn't understand it. This pump has a capacity, the large pump, that's the only other pump you have available, has a capacity of 90 cubic meters, regardless of what pipes you have connected, unless the pipes are the limiting factor. Now, understand that the small pipe can only move 26, 
That is smaller than 30 and also smaller than 90 cubic meters. The medium pipe can only move 56. That is still smaller than 90. So if I connect one of these, that is your max flow. If you connect the big pipe, it has 127 cubic meters. That is bigger than 90 cubic meters. So now the pump becomes the limiter. You can only pump 90 cubic meters. Cool. Let's run this. Look at that. 86. There is... Um, there's some math here. It's close to 90. Uh, just trust me on that. But 90 cubic meters is what you can pump here. And then if you look uh, what happens when you want to pump into the large tower over here... Um, it is. It gets a penalty again of about 10 cubic meters because it goes uphill. Got it? Water pressure matters and where you pump it to matters too. And then uh, the number that you see here will always be limited by anything that goes downhill. Like if the, once this tower is actually full, which should be eventually, um, you can no longer well, pump any water in it. So this is, this is smaller. So then you have another connection here. The next connection you probably want to put here is a water treatment plant. There are two. There's a small and a big one. Uh, all they require is water and chemicals, and then the amount of chemicals that you use depends on the quality of water that comes in and that you want out. Actually, pretty well thought out. Um, but let's plop this down here. Let's get a quick road connection right in here. These do need workers. Do I have any access to workers here? I don't think I do. Honestly, it's not super important right now. Um, but there's your uh, treatment plant, and at the very beginning, I highly recommend you just buy the chemicals uh, because it will take a long time to get this, the amount of chemicals that you need. They need po uh, 0.47 tons of chemicals. That is half the production of one vanilla chemical plant. Got it? Half the production just to get this one running, and you're not getting any money from this. You're just getting happy citizens. So at the beginning, I'll just import this. Uh, to make it easy even even just auto import um may, may be the right answer anyways I'm, I'm rambling on here i'm sorry this is getting longer but this is complicated um again you can now connect your water pipe however you want to directly to this guy like that and then you will see water pumping through here now the water out of this tower is running at 90 cubic meters uh, per second that's great but it will only run that far until this water tank is full and that is all if you connect this now with uh, one of the pumps, and as we already said, the small water pump can only handle 30 cubic meter. That's probably not good enough because the maximum flow is 150 cubic meters. Got it? Um, so you use the big pump and this one will not max it out. You need two big pumps at least to uh, max this out or, um, well, any combination of pumps. You, you can do the math. It's not complicated. But... There are four ends, and four small pumps will go give you a max of 120 cubic meters of water. So we'll never max this out. Just hope you understand that. I'm not trying to make this complicated. But even when I put the pump right next to it, it doesn't change the pressure here. This one looks confusing, and I don't know. It, it's just some, uh, uh, what's it called? It's just some simulation, but it will only still move 90, and it was already moving 90 from this tower, because the height is still fine. And you can do this until this pipe reaches a height, or the, the next building of the pipe reaches a height of 50 meters above uh, the ground here. Hope that makes sense. Anyways, that's how you get your water, and then you cr uh, create actual water. And here you can set your desired water quality up here. Uh, why does this matter? Some buildings require really high water quality. Drinking water is one of them. But also when you get into some of the industries like food. Food has a special water requirement. I can't hover over it. I'm sorry. Right underneath crops, consumption at maximum production, crops 42 uh, tons, and then 8.5 cubic meters of water. Required water quality, 97%. Actually, I, th I think I said something wrong earlier. 97% is considered drinking water and above. So 97, 98, 99. Sorry, correction. Um, and then anything below 97 is considered dirty drinking water. gives you a little health penalty. Um, but uh, it needs 97% of water quality to even produce food. So you cannot produce food anymore with any of the vanilla water that you get out of the ground. You have to refine it a little bit. So um, some industries require this. If you look at other industries, for example, construction, a uh, concrete plant, requires water quality of 55%. Here, it's absolutely fine to just suck it out of a dirty, dirty lake if you want to. And you can use that water directly. So not all water is equal. And then don't forget that you have to pay chemicals to treat water well um, afterwards. So yeah, 
Um, I should probably mention that this concrete plant is one of the ones that is a little weird because it has a water pipe in. It doesn't have sewage pipe connections, as you can see. And this is one of the only buildings that works with um, drinking water as well as connected pipe water. And I believe the uh, technical service can actually deliver to this concrete plant in particular. It's just... It's a, it's a compromise that they made. You can use drinking water for this one to get everything done. It just consumes a lot of it. So sometimes it's not worth it. But if this is just in range of a water substation, it will function. You don't have to add extra uh, pipe connections. Where this industry over here, if this is in range of a substation, it will only have drinking water. It will not have water to actually produce the product. Wonderful. I think we're getting pretty close to having everything covered that is uh, about water. Let's see, are there any other buildings that we care about? There's a water switch here. Water switch is very similar to a pump, but not really, because all it does is take in one water and then split out the water however you want, but it doesn't use uh, power. So as long as you connect this to a water tower and everything that follows is below the water tower height, or you connect directly to a, um, to a pump, then this one will flow and you can just connect it more and more until you go higher at some point you're too high <coughs> to to pump any water and then here is where you have to actually consider the uh the amounts that you can pump so 120 127 really means uh two of these and one of these approximately um if you want to use that and then your substations actually has an output too and you just have to make sure that you have the correct output per day cool um that's a lot, and that's a lot of water, I think, and that's probably covering everything there. Sewage, there is the sewage pump if you want to use it. I can tell you, looks like this, uh, pretty basic. It effectively increases the height by three meters. Also just for testing, but every time you place this and put the sewage pump down here, you have a three meter increase in height which means if you have to go uphill, it's gonna not be fun. So uh, don't do it, but you have that available. And now you have the number that's important for that. Um, there's a sewage switch here, we already used that. And then a sewage loading, unloading treatment plant, we already talked about that. At this point, there's no rail loading for sewage or water. There's also no sewage container that you would use for, um, for rail because you need a certain amount. Um, Peter is hoping, or the devs are hoping, that the modders will take care of that. If that's something you considered. Especially now since you can buy and export uh, water and sewage. So, um, that is that. What am I missing here? I don't think I'm missing anything in particular with the water, which is already really uh, con convoluted, I think is the right word. Um, next thing, there are some new buildings. For example, you have a small vanilla police station now, you have a small vanilla courthouse, you still only have the big prison, which is probably a good thing, honestly. Um, you have a new theater, looks like this, it's just different, it's actually, it's, it's this one. Um, and probably a couple other vehicles or other things that you can use now, and uh, that's probably it on that front. The next thing, you have these uh, bus end stations. What are they? Um, let's see if I can, um, make this really simple and clear. I really hope I can. Yep. Put that one there. That looks good. Get all of this built. What that end station does is allow you to use line spacing without having your vehicle slow down. Does that make any sense? A lot of people always complain that your buses go 30 kilometers an hour or whatever speed limit you have set. Um, that is because they're trying to even out the gap between um, between what am I saying? Between the car in front of them and behind them. So, what this bus end station does is, if you use it, uh, and oh, good, they turned this off. Very good. If you use it, then the line on oh, it. Uh, Got to do a couple more things. Let's have the line for real now. Cool. All of them are set up. Let's get all of them on the road. Have them go. Cool. They can drive. Um, it will tell you line spacing is not supported, which may not make sense. So what we have to do first is delete this stop, <clears throat> get rid of that, and then line spacing is disabled. So you now can turn it on or off, however you want to do it. 
Um, but if you add the end station, honestly, it doesn't matter where you add it, as long as you only add it once per turn, otherwise you may do something a little weird. You can add it multiple times. Uh, but when you add it, the line spacing is now not supported anymore because this is the thing that does the line spacing. And how it works is it takes all the vehicles that you have on the line. Right now you see them really clumped up here. It will take all the vehicles on the line. Let's get them home. Okay, uh, there you go. And then it will tell these vehicles to wait here. And if this loads up, then there's just a queue behind it. But this one will wait until it's an appropriate time. And it's the appropriate time. There are two things that you can do. One, you use the variable time. This is exactly the same as the line spacing enabled. It will just wait until it's the right time for the amount of vehicles that are on this line to go. The second thing you can do is set a fixed time. The fixed time can be anything between uh, zero or one and 60 seconds. So um, if you know your frequency that you want, you could say, I want you to leave every three seconds. So then they leave really, really fast because three seconds in this game is nothing. Um, and then can you use the variable time too. Important, maybe, you can fu um, deliver fuel here, which means every time a bus parks here, they will refuel. Not just every time they need fuel. So this guy is currently really full. And if I get some fuel in here, I don't actually know if I have power. I hope I have power. I expect this guy to refuel when he just parks there. Refueled, see? So buses don't have to go out of their way to the gas station anymore to get the fuel. And it doesn't matter how full the bus is. Every time they arrive here, they will take some fuel on. Cool. Um, there are two of those end stations. I hope that all made sense. It's a cool feature, I think. And the best thing I was told, I'm going to try this out right now. Um, give me two sewage trucks. The best thing is, aww, <laughs> it's not a thing. I think at some point you could actually use it with industrial vehicles, but that doesn't seem to be a thing anymore. I was really excited when that came out, but um, it may have been just false information. Uh, I should probably cut this out, but every once in a while, um, it's okay if b Joe is wrong. And you're probably going to call me out on it anyways. Yeah, just, just check in if this is still possible, and it's not. Cool. Um, the last thing, uh, traffic management. So if you turn the traffic management simulation on, you can go to... Here. I wasn't sure why I couldn't find it. There are all these signals. There are a couple things that are weird. I'm going to go over it because everything else should be pretty self-explanatory. This is your old waypoint. Nothing changes there. Uh, speed limit. If you want to place a speed limit, uh, let's say right here. This is how you place it. You just select whatever vehicle or whatever thing you have, and then you select the side that you want it on. Um, you can place them. You can also change the speed limit on it with Q and E. Okay, do you see that the change is there in, in my mouse? 90 is your max, and um, that you can place that one, or you can place this one. When you see a vehicle go through here, it will go to its max speed up to 90, um, and then it will have to slow down at 30 here. Pretty cool. Um, you have some signals like place no heavy goods vehicles, or no heavy goods vehicles other than supply, etc., etc., etc. These will do exactly what you expect them to do, so use them wisely. Can I change this zone? That'd be cool. Oh, yeah, it's a... Uh, 30, 40, 50 zone. I love it. Um, and uh, that's pretty cool. The other thing that I should tell you is that signs that you place, no motor vehicles, for example, here, in both directions, um, I think everything that's still en route is not going to listen to it, but then this one already updated. Um, this is just a sign that simply says you can pass here. There's no, don't think of it as notes or something, but vehicles will just not be able to pass there, but I think technical services can still go through here. And, um, like, utilities and other things can still drive there, but nobody else can. To remove signs, you just click on it again. Um, that should be pretty pretty self-explanatory. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, yeah. Junction design, the last thing. You, do you now have nodes right on the junctions? Cool. You click on it, and you can see road signs, crossroads, whatever you want. You can add just regular signals here, and then you can change uh, what they are and where they are right here. Pretty straightforward. Uh, move to left, move to right, like, you can play with this. I don't think this is very, very complicated. You can set your priority roads, and you can do other things. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that's pretty cool. And then you can add traffic signs or traffic signals right here. Um, before you place them, you need to at least know what the priorities are and what they aren't. There you go. Um, why is that one? Oh, they don't have power. <laughs> There's traffic lights without power supply. Um, I kind of forgot about that. 
So you do have to make sure that they have all the power that they need. I hope this is just going to be fine for right now. Yay, look at that. Actually, it's light. I, I didn't remember that that was a problem, but that's fine. And then you can set your different intervals. You can set intervals like setting a new interval or setting this interval to just two. Um, you can add a new cycle where some other pieces are red or green together. You can, you can play with this however you want. The game is smart enough to do a couple things for you, and sometimes other things are not going to be done for you. That is pretty neat. What you also can do... Um, actually, stop. What you also can do is expand your nodes. And that one is a little more confusing, at least in my mind. Set interval, no. Add a cycle, no. Where is the node thing? Oh, there we go. Add, remove, cross road nodes. So sometimes your roads may be so close together that it makes sense to expand them a little bit. So I, for example, could just add this as a, as a cross node. Sorry. Making this a little more complicated than I want to. Uh, don't save this. Let's do this again. So, you have this crossroad. Now you can see that there's a sign there, 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 there. So we just added this piece to the crossroad, to this node. We can also... Let me try that again. Um, this is our original node, and this is where you start from. You could add more nodes to that if you wanted to. You could also add less nodes to it. It's a little weird how they do this, but... Effectively, you're currently here, and you could add uh, this node because it's in range. And now you expand it instead of just having four rows in this node, you have now five nodes because you added this node, and then there's the entry here. When you do that, you effectively say that anyone that's inside this node will block the whole inter uh, intersection if it's appropriate. Sometimes you may want to use this, sometimes you may not. Um, I don't know if I will ever find a reason to do it this way, but... It's an option, and you can play with it, and you can use you can use the generated cycles or not. I think I have to... Crossroads have unsaved changes. What is your problem? i to make sure this works. There we go. No, that's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. So now all of this is green, and that node is too far, this node is too far, and this node doesn't really count. But now I can just assign this. And now we have lights all over the place, and this piece in the middle is open. It's just a thing that is there. If you really want to mess with traffic management, this is probably what you have to do. And if you don't, then that's fine. The vehicles will just park uh, on here. I do believe they're working on emergency vehicles that they can actually run through these lights, no matter what the traffic situation is. But that may take a little while longer. So with this, you can probably do highways and similar things now. At least I hope so. Um, at least you could reduce the traffic in your inner city so you can actually make sure that all your transport and all your delivery vehicles get exactly where you want them. This may be really interesting in um, other uh, industrial applications, I think. For completeness sake, I almost forgot. Grid snapping. Um, a lot of you have requested this, but I'm sure you already found it. That's pretty basic. Down here, you can turn on the wireframe. Or, click it again, then you get wireframe with a magnet. The magnet is the grid snapping. Grid snapping should be pretty straightforward. Take anything you want, and you snap into the middle of these grids. You can't go to the, uh, to the center of these boxes yet, so just be aware. But you can place your, your roads like this, however you want, and you can put them out, for example, one, and then um, turn them like this far. And We have this nice new angle system if you want, but then you can build... Whatever you need. This is very ugly, <laughs> but that's fine. Um, you can use a grid system like that. That's not the way you're supposed to use it. But it also works on your vehicle, on your buildings. Um, you can now lay out the whole city really nice and straight if you want to in whatever situations. The only thing is, it's always the center of your mouse. So whatever the center of the building is, is what grid you're going to go on. If you want to turn it off, you can also just release it with F1. Um, but there you go. Sometimes this will cause you a little bit of a problem, but most of the time it should be really nice. So, grid snapping is also a thing that you can do now, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, that is all that I wanted to show you. Um, that's all that's new. I hope that helps. The water thing will need, take a little bit getting used to, but just remember, for water you can use pumps to move it anywhere, and you need power. For sewage, you need slope and no power. And you have to um, put it somewhere, which in this case is just the water. So playing on maps without water could be more challenging because right now the only way you can get rid of sewage is with a, a tank directly to the customs office. But um, I think it will add more challenges and different gameplay elements. I definitely think this is very complicated. You can turn it on for your existing save 100%. 
but it will take you a lot of work. For my season four, we have two and a half cities and one big industrial area. It probably took, after I knew what I was doing, about four hours. So keep that in mind. I don't think it's a very big save. Um, and if you have a bigger one, maybe it's not worth it. If you have a lot more industries that use water, maybe it's not worth it, etc., etc., etc. But I'm excited for this because it adds a whole other dimension to this game, and I hope you are too. For right now, thank you for watching. If I forgot anything, please put it in the comments. If it's important, I will pin it. Um, if it's super important and not clear, I will make a tutorial about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again next time. Bye.